He's always made it seem easy. You know, there's always been a grace. So in spite of the hard work, it, it doesn't appear to be difficult. Grant revels in being alive. Here is a man who is well into his 70s, who teaches dance four days a week. My father was selling vacuum cleaners, and he um, happened to sell a vacuum cleaner to a tap dance teacher <laughs> who couldn't pay for the, the vacuum cleaner, so my sister and I had free lessons for a year. He speaks as an adolescent, as a young teenager, of dancing um, in the moonlight uh, in the grounds of the temple in Cardston. And I, nobody knew that. I'm glad of that. <laughs> they would have probably locked me up. I went to the university, though. It, it was a, it's sort of a big change. And I elected to take law. And that was a five-year period. And I stuck it out, and it was, I think, did quite well. In my fourth year, I remember having a traumatic experience. The day that I realized law and justice were not the same thing. And I do appreciate what I learned at the University of Alberta, because now I know in my old age that no knowledge is wasted. And then I got very, very involved in contemporary dance. Uh, I thought I hated ballet. I did, I'd never seen it. <laughs> I'd never taken it. Just been admitted to the bar, and three months after that, the woman who founded the National Ballet of Canada, Celia Franca, came through town. And I showed her two solos I created. Anyway, at the end of it, she said, will you join Canada's National Ballet? And I said, okay. <laughs> Obviously, we are aware of York University and Simon Fraser University, both of which he was instrumental in developing programs. And these are programs that foster dance education. In other words, they bring forward artists who are thinking people. His being is an amalgamation of body and mind. It's connected together, and this is what makes him such a complete person.